Good morning, YouTubers, RVers, fellow hams, and whoever else happens to be watching. Well, today I need to do a, a little repair on the RV. About a couple of weeks ago, I was in here uh, working away on the computer, and I heard a ka-thump. What the heck was that? It sounded like something hit the RV. Sounds inside the box are resonated and magnified. Um, seeds and pine needles hitting the roof sound like pebbles being thrown on top of the RV, you know. And it's really hard to tell when you hear a sound what it could have been and where it might have come from. So I started hunting around. Uh, went outside, looked all around the RV, couldn't see any evidence of anything falling or hitting it. Started hunting around inside looking for what might have fallen down. It was a real mystery for a while until I opened up the cabinet where my hanging clothes are. Ta-da! There we are. The rod fell down. And the rod fell down because these plastic rings that hold it up had aged to the point where the plastic just gave out, cracked, and failed under the weight. So, I have the failed part here and the remaining good one here, which is very, very thin and flexible plastic. I mean, this stuff is not very strong. So, I'm going to fire up on shape and I'm going to model myself a new ring. Won't be a ring. It'll be sort of shaped like a... Um, you know the, the metal flange and the gasket on an exhaust pipe, how it's kind of an oval shape? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. There's really no reason to have all this extra material up here and here when you've only got two screw holes holding the weight. It can be just a, a you know, a shape like that. And uh, I can save on material and probably make it stronger too by making it a little, a little taller where the screw actually goes through the plastic that's carrying the weight instead of this this flange coming up. Um, so yeah, there's some, there's some design considerations there. So that's what I'm doing uh, today. So uh, let's go to the computer, fire up on shape. I'll measure, uh, measure these and we'll uh, make up some new parts. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is measure all the uh, necessary parts here and get a good idea of dimensions for my replacement hanger. So here's... Uh, the remaining good one and the broken one and I, uh, I kind of traced out this just to have a rough idea of the existing shape and to give me some things to write down dimensions on and I got my calipers on. This is the pipe that was in there to hold the clothes up so I could measure its outer diameter. I guess I'll do that first. Zero that. So it's, uh, oh, I'm in inches. I want to be in millimeters. There we go. I do all my design work in millimeters and centimeters and metric units. I find it easier to think in uh, something that's divisible by 10. And uh, this is 25.6 millimeters. Uh, right. So that's what I'm going to be doing, is I'm just going to take all the existing parts and I'm going to make my measurements here. And I think the only other dimension I really need to worry about is the spacing between the screw holes, because I'm going to be redesigning this whole part. So, uh, still at zero, yeah. So let's figure out from center to center is uh, 44 millimeters. So we'll take this distance was uh, 44 millimeters. Okay, I'm going to use on shape, which I've used quite a bit in the past. I, I really like it. Um, everybody's got their favorite CAD program, though, so you know, use whatever's best for you. And I'm not a CAD engineer. I'm going to say this right up front because somebody's going to be probably complaining about the way I do things, and there's I'm sure a better way or more efficient way to do everything I'm going to do in here. But like I said, I'm not a CAD engineer. I've just sort of figured this out as I went along. So I've created a new document called it RV Clothes Rod Hanger. And I'm looking at the top plane, which in my head is kind of like looking down on the print bed.
So now that I've got the part designed, I'm going to slice it and get it ready for 3D printing. So first I have to get it out of on shape. We'll go down here to part one. We'll right click and we'll select export. That brings up our export dialog where we name the part. RV close rod hanger. Format is STL, which is what we want for the slicing software. Binary. Units matches what we're working in, millimeters. Resolution medium, that's fine. The lower resolution would make less polygons, uh, make things a little chunkier. Higher resolution makes things finer. The data files get bigger. The work that the slicing machine, the slicing software has to do, the work that the 3D printer has to do increases as you increase resolution. But if you're doing really fine parts, super detailed miniatures, then you'd want to go to a higher resolution. I usually just leave it at minimum. Options, download, because I'm going to download the file. I hit OK, and it'll come up, and it'll ask me to uh, pick a file. See, I already did this. I've got it in the right folder, and there it is. I've already exported it, so I'm just showing you this. So once I've got the part exported, I go to my slicing software, and I'm using Cura. Um, this is all set up for my printer already. We just need to open our part file, and I will go back to... Oops, not there. Pick the file that I exported out of Onshape, and we'll open it, and we should see the part appear on the bed. There it is. Oops. Rotate. Remember what all the boss buttons do. They all do different things between the different versions of the program, or different programs. Um, I tend to like to print my parts near the front of the bed. It seems to adhere better up there. I don't know why, but it does. And I'm going to uh, make a duplicate of this. It's been so long since I've done this. That's not what I want. Now what if we just open another one of the same? There we go. And we'll bring it forward and we'll move it over. And get those kind of in the same place so that the amount of bed movement is reduced, minimized. Yeah, that should be good. Okay, so now I've got two parts. Uh, yeah, I'm ready to slice it. I've already got all my settings pretty much where I want them for most stuff, so I'm just going to leave those alone and just hit prepare. It'll slice the model and it will uh, ask me what to do with it. And I'm going to save it to a file. So we'll save this and we'll go back to the same place we were. And we'll save the G code there. And it's done. All right. I am ready to take that G code file and move it over to the printer right there and uh, print it out. Let's go do that. Here are the finished parts. Now here's one of the originals for comparison. And if we look at it, I can get in here sideways. You'll see that uh, it's not quite as tall as the original, but just, just about. 
but it's solid, you know. And, and I might have to use slightly longer screws, but again, if I look at uh, the profile, you can see that I'm really only adding about a quarter of an inch, uh, maybe a third of an inch in height for the screw. I might be able to use the original screws. I might need to use slightly longer, but that's okay. These are all support. You know, so the screw comes all the way through. Every layer is engaged with the screw, so I've got real solid support there. And a good, heavy, solid piece. This is going to be way stronger than the original. Way stronger. So, the only thing left to do is put them up in the uh, cabinet. So there you go, uh, using the 3D printer to make myself replacement parts. It saves, um, some of you are going to say, well, that's a lot of effort and work when you could just, you know, go and buy a new part. Uh, yeah, I could uh, unhook everything and take the RV into town and try to find parking outside of a, a store, like a hardware store or an RV parts store, uh, and then go in and buy a replacement parts for probably three or four bucks each. And then take the RV all the way back here, hook everything back up, and you know, it's a lot of effort. It's a lot of work. Um, and it's fun to just make my own part. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I kind of enjoy doing that. Uh, it's, it's, it's got a neatness factor to it, you know. It's kind of neat that I could just design up a part and 3D print it. But uh, anyway, that's done. Um, the rod is repaired, the clothes are hanging back up, and uh, hopefully the new parts are strong enough to last a while. You know, and even if they aren't, I've got the model on file. If one of them breaks down the road, I could just print another one. Um, and if it breaks because of a failure in the design, I can just redesign it and print another one. So. And I hope you all find that, found that entertaining and uh, useful. And we'll uh, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.